child is not attending school. That's a, that's a ground in itself. Obviously, that could be my concern. And for the same, uh, I don't know, a single mum who had three children and the eldest was getting in trouble. Yep. Do you have grounds to look at the other two? Because they're a family dynamic. Depends if, if they've been referred. I would normally, if only one child has been referred, but it, I've, I've seen from the referral that there's concerns about the younger children, yeah. I might go on social work and say, are you aware of these younger children? Do you want to make a referral? Um, and they might say, oh yes, actually, and they might make a referral. So you liaise? Yeah, liaise with quite heavily with social work and the police as well, but yeah, mostly um, social work. So yeah, if I had concerns about other children that hadn't been referred, I would definitely pick up the phone and so it's speak not, social work. It's not black and white, it's not this person, and then their little world that can be, okay, your little sister also needs family. Yeah, you take a very holistic approach and yeah, but sometimes, you know, the younger children are doing okay, but perhaps the older child is behaviour is not so good. Here it's like the mum the mum had some kind of monitor things and you know like you've got a hard out. Right. That would obviously have an open effect on the older ones. But the control I then surely um if you're looking holistically, if there's a problem with the mum or a concern with the mum, if you can spot that you would deal with that and then the rest would take the fuck out. Potentially. Like, oh you hope. Yeah, uh, you're looking, you're taking a very holistic approach and seeing whether there's any need for a legal order. It might be that social work can engage with the family on a voluntary basis. So, although the child might have committed an offence and you're doing that, um, it could be that highlights the root of the cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you can deal with that. Is that something you do? Well, yeah, that's something that the panel could look at if we get to a children's eating system. But it might be something social work we're looking at on a voluntary basis. So, it's, it could go. Many different ways. <laughs> no, no, it's been a question. But yeah, I mean, certainly you're looking at everything, so if, if you pick up that in a referral, you'll be considering that. Um, what do you mean by a voluntary basis for the social work? Because I don't think I've ever heard that anyone's on Okay, so if social work have a concern, well, a, a, a good example would be if are very concerned about a child and feel that the child should be in foster care. Mm -hmm. The family and the social worker would obviously speak to the family first and, and perhaps suggest foster care. If the family agreed to that, that would be on a voluntary basis. They can sign an agreement saying yes, we're happy for the child to go into foster care. And it does happen. But if the family say absolutely not, we're not letting you take the child to go into foster care, that's when we would get a referral and that's when they need the legal order to say that the child is placed in kinship care, or oh, sorry, foster care. And um, so they can't actually take the child to care unless? Unless you have a legal order, absolutely. Yeah. Because obviously having your child in your care is a human right. It's a, it's a right that you have. Every parent has the right to have their child in their care. And if we're taking that away from them, we have to have, um, like I said, it has to be justifiable, we have to have very good reason, it has to be necessary. Um, I just didn't so short, but I can't give you a photo just to work. <laughs> no, I mean, they, they don't have to come to us if the family I agree. I just want that's what I mean by. Sure like, yeah, that's what I mean by voluntary. So if they say, yeah, we understand the concern, we'll work with you, we'll engage in a parenting class, and whilst we do that, we'll have to the child to go to foster care, it can all be done without. The report are being involved, but it's when the family don't agree that we become involved. Question, <coughs> we'll start with that. <laughs> um, if it happened that uh, <coughs> the parents said no to uh, that situation about the child being taken off, how long would it take for uh, a legal order to come through? It depends how high the concerns are. Now, I don't know, have you heard about a child protection order? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a child protection order could be taken out that very same day. That's an emergency situation. So that's when social work think we're really, really concerned about this child. We need to get the child out of the care of the parents and into a foster care placement or a kinship care placement, that's a family placement. Um, and that can be done not almost immediately. And what social work do then is that they actually go to the court and they ask the judge to grant them a child protection order. And they say, we have these concerns, and that's why we want a child protection order to remove the child from the care of the home. 
and they can get that almost immediately, but it only lasts two days. So, this is getting more complicated than I was going to go, but it um, only lasts two days, so that's when their, their social worker, as soon as they get a child protection order, they phone us, they say, we've got a child protection order, we need a hearing ASAP, and we arrange a children's hearing in two days. And we try and get a more long-term order put in place. If you didn't get a, long, a more long-term order, like if there was some reason that it would not be available, uh, would the children have to go back to the parents? Even yeah, if just assume, yeah, and we don't have an order in place, the children would go back to the parents. So the parents can or this, or like, do you have a legal obligation to tell the parents? We would tell the parents, but also social workers would normally advise in that situation the parents to get a lawyer. Because it is quite a complicated process, and like I say, most parents won't know anything about it, they won't understand the system, so particularly when it's a child protection order, because that's the highest of the highest concerns, the social worker will normally say, you know, you, you should probably think about getting a lawyer. And, and most parents will get quite quickly in that situation. And they'll be able to guide them through the whole process. Would you get involved in, um, say, a custody dispute if a crime has been committed by one of the parents, such as um, demanding money from the other for the child? Like basically, child trafficking. And I mean, it, it, I don't think it'd be as serious as that, but I would say there is a lot of child trafficking. Some, sometimes those types of disputes can be dealt with um, in uh, what's called civil court matters, so between the parents. Right. But if for any reason there becomes concerns about the children, someone might make a referral. Um, courts can make a referral, so if, if a court, there's a divorce going on mm -hmm. and there's concerns about the children through the court proceedings and divorce, the, the, the sheriff, the judge, mm -hmm. could actually say, let's make a referral to the court because we're quite concerned about it. Are the referrals of one of them? No, so like if you had a family, you would say, this referral would be bad. We wouldn't necessarily have to tell unless they but ask. If, okay, but if they ask, you've got a legal obligation to tell. So, Lynn, did you have a question? Yeah, um, she already answered some of them, but I wanted to uh, find out, like, um, for example, if the parents um, are divorced, and you think the other, uh, of the parent is the one who's um, neglecting or abusing mm -hmm. the child, and if you challenge in court, and you say, okay, I want the custody to be, and because the child is already living in the foster care, and it's still going through, like, the process of the court, but uh, because they say that the mother is the one who's supposed to be staying with the child, but uh, if the mom is the one who is, uh, is the custody being uh, transferred to the dad or? It can, yeah, that's an option. So certainly when we go to children's hearing, um, they will look at all options and if you can keep the child in the family, that's always best, whether that be with the father or an uncle or an auntie or a grandmother. So that, you look at all the family um, first before you look at foster placement. So if you've got a, a father who is maybe having contact once a weekend, but actually it looks like he might be the best carer for the child, and um, primary carer, then you could move the placement to, to, the, to the father. Okay, so is there will be like a, a court order that the mom should not um, go and see the child? Or so it, it just completely depends on, on the circumstances, I suppose. Um, so you, the, the legal order can say whatever it is that you want it to say. So they might say that mum sees the child every weekend, or once a week, or not at all if it's serious enough. So you can say, you know, it really depends on the circumstances of the case. But I have my question to So say, so say if the mother was um held up not willing to look after the child and the grandmother and the mother or the relatives would a father mm -hmm. that say hadn't seen their child in the best part of a decade, would they be considered the next 
person. Even yeah, though they haven't had a relationship. But I think the social worker in that situation probably wants to do a few assessments first. So if the father comes forward and says, I haven't been involved, but I would like to be the carer, social work would look at them and say, well, can we do a parenting assessment? And that's probably whether they would see whether he'd be an appropriate carer or not. In that situation, you'd probably be looking to re-establish some form of contact with the child and, and seeing if that can progress. Um, how many times can a child protection order be put in place <coughs> for that, that one child? Because two days seems like a bit of a Yeah, so it is very confusing. Um, the process for a child protection order is quite complicated because what happens, let's see if I can explain this as best I can, you have a child protection order for two days, you then have a children's healing. What then happens is they're able to put a, a, what's called an interim compulsory supervision order. Now, do you remember, compulsory supervision order is the legal order that I was talking about. Usually, a compulsory supervision order lasts for a year, but an interim compulsory supervision order can last for three weeks. So, once you have your child protection order for two days, you would then go to healing. They could look at putting an interim compulsory supervision order for three weeks. You have to then have a children's healing every three weeks to renew that order until we can get the on a different side until we get the fact finding part resolved at court and then we can put in a full compulsory supervision order which lasts for the full year. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of orders kind of ticking over until we get to the point that we can have a full compulsory supervision order. Can I just turn down the heat?